Hey everybody in Facebook world, Dr. Tammy here. Um, I was asked a question, I did a post the other day, and do you guys have any questions? And I get some strange questions sometimes, but I got the question of how to store cannabis. And as a lot of you probably know, I do a lot of cannabis certifications. And as I was doing my research, cause I'm just, I'm not gonna just, I'm not one of those people who just say no or yes without knowing why. And so as I'm asking questions and studying, I learned that the cannabis plant is actually a medicine and it has over a hundred different medicines in it. And of those medicines, there are parts of the plant that are things like terpenes and different qualities to the plant. So they have different smells and they have different properties. And of all the different hundred plus medicines in the plant, those are called cannabinoids. And THC is only one of the cannabinoids, but it's like catnip for humans. So it gets everybody a little excited and that's where all the drama has come up over the years about using it as medicine. And it's not for everybody, but I can tell you uh, over the time that I've been doing these cannabis certifications, it's been very powerful. And people are, you know, there are many myths and one of them is that it's a gateway drug, but I have found it to be a gateway drug off of other drugs and off of narcotics. Hey Paula, love you. <laughs> um, and off narcotics and so many other things too. So, I mean, it's just, it's been a game changer for a lot of people. And uh, you can, I have a book on Amazon, it's called The Cannabis Solution. And if you wanna read that, you can hear my personal story. So I won't bother you with all that. But over the three, almost four years of doing cannabis certifications, I have come to understand that there is a lot that I still don't know. and. I think it's just so crazy from a nerdy science standpoint that you have something called an endocannabinoid system and that the cannabinoids in the plant can respond and it can do different things for pain receptors and anti-inflammatory receptors and cancer and immune and mood and so many different things. So um, I really believe in the power of that for patients. And so as I've studied it, I have learned a bit of the nerdy science, but there are still a lot of questions that I get that I don't know the answer to a lot. So when I got this question, how best to store cannabis, honestly, I didn't know the answer. And so I went and looked it up and I looked at several different sources. And so what I came up with just made sense to me. Cause again, at the end of the day, common sense. So I don't know if this is right or wrong. And you guys can put in the comments, you know, you guys have all the experience if you use cannabis as medicine, but um, this is what I found on the web and so I'll just kind of share it with you. So the biggest thing when you watch all the movies and stuff, you'll see a plastic baggie and actually they say this is not the best way to store and if you're getting it from the dispensary and you're getting it legally, they will give you in a container and usually it's a light sensitive dark container and um, it will be sealed. And that's another thing too that some people don't realize is you just can't have a baggie of cannabis in your car. Even if you have a card, it's kind of like an open container uh, law with alcohol. So it has to stay in your medicine bottle basically. Um, so, but as far as storage goes, no baggie, okay? So the reason is, is because air can get to it and also moisture and so you'll get mold in here so not a good thing if you're going to use it quickly that's probably okay um but long term you don't want to and it did say that you can have the um flour can and we're not talking about edibles right now i'll talk about that in a minute but the flour can be stored for up to a year if it's stored properly so what i came up with is glass and usually a glass jar and so i'm having my water in a glass jar, just to kind of make a point here, so I don't forget glass jar. Um, and so anyway, a couple different things with your glass jar, keep it cool. So high temperatures can dry out the terpenes, which are sort of that sort of uh, smell that gives it its power, but also terpenes are very powerful from what I've studied for neuropathy type conditions. So you want those terpenes to stay really strong strong and unfortunately that's what kind of gives it the kind of stinky pine smell and there's different lemon terpenes and different terpenes too and they do all smell differently but you don't want those to evaporate because they have a lot of medicinal property to it and while we say keep it cool don't put it in the refrigerator or freeze it because that will burst the trichomes and again there's a lot of nerdy science that i don't understand about the plant and um, how they grow it or how they process it because i'm just not a part of that 
world and how they do all that. Um, but that you don't want to put it in the freezer because that won't preserve it. And you guys can comment and tell me if you know different, but that's kind of what I read and um, not in the fridge either. So dark, it needs to be dark. So um, UV light, just like the sun. I think of tie-dyed shirts because I think of Scooby-Doo and I think of cannabis and that's just part of the old stigma attached, but that's very much changing. But just like you leave your tie-dye t-shirt out in the sun, it will fade, so will your cannabis. And so as it fades, um, it breaks down the plant. So that just makes sense to me too. So in a very dry area where there's no mold or bacteria, you know, you wouldn't want to leave it on the porch where, you know, every time you open it, it's getting like humidity. Or if you live in Florida, that kind of thing where there's a lot of humidity, um, definitely wouldn't want to leave it outside. And in a clean glass jar, so a lot of times um, when people use cannabis for a long time, it probably gets pretty nasty looking. So you want to make sure that you clean it and maybe clean it in between um, each time you go to the dispensary and get your medication. So um, also, one of the things about plastic that they said is that there's a static electricity charge. So I don't know if you've ever like in the winter time, you know, touch plastic and then touch it against your clothes and stuff. It'll really build up that static and that static electricity charge will break down the aroma and the flavor. And I know if you're using it as medicine, you probably don't care about aroma and flavor, but if it does break down the trichomes or aspects of the plant that have the medicine, that could be a problem. Okay, and then some people um, think about wood, right? Like the cigar um, humidors, that kind of thing. And they said that that also will change the flavor and it can make it taste kind of like cedar. So if you're gonna use wood, use more of a, um, just a, a oak wood or something like that. So it won't change the flavor, but also you can get humidity in wood too, which you probably won't in glass. And then edibles are a whole different thing. So um, they're food, right? And even though they're gummies and you can usually have a gummy bear that's still a gummy bear a year from now in the cabinet, um, it's still food, right? And it can still expire. So you wanna go with the expiration dates. And again, usually the cannabis does come in a plastic, dark colored container so it doesn't get light, but you probably want to transfer that to glass. Just makes sense when you get home and keep it airtight and in a dark space. So a um, few things there, but I wouldn't, like if you're buying um, chocolate or you know any kind of cookies or anything like that, they are going to expire if it's an edible. So you don't wanna get sick. Okay, that's really all I know. So if you guys know, please put it in the comments and, and share what is the best way to store your cannabis. And I love y'all very much and hope this was a fun topic for you and I'll see you soon, bye.